Hey everyone and welcome to The Aussie Show, Season 2, Episode 4. I'm Truthman, this is uh, Timothée Chiala. We are uh, both together from uh, Montreal right now because we are just after the HWBot World Tour 2015 first edition in North America. So you guys from HWBot are still here uh, in Montreal and uh, enjoying some of the cold and the snow that we have. Yeah, I would like to say we're enjoying the, the beach and some fresh beers, but the beach here is white, completely white and actually really freezing. But the beer is fresh, so everything is fine. <laughs> We, sa we save the most important thing. Yeah, of course. So what's the, what are we going to be talking about uh, for this uh, OC show uh, today? So the, yes, there's a few things we want uh, to talk to you about. So the first thing is the World Tour North America. So that's the event we just all, uh, held this weekend, actually, at the LAN ETS here in Montreal. So this event went pretty well. And yeah, we're, we're going to come back to that. A lot of things happened. Um, then we're going to talk about the World Tour in Europe this time. So that's um, still part of the HW but World Tour. And it's... Um, event that is for uh, European overclockers. It's going to take place in France and here again a lot of things planned and it's going to be quite quite epic. Uh, one more, um, there will be um, one uh, topic about competitions at OC Esports because this month is actually I think... There's one actually quite a lot of competitions going on at that time. Yeah, if you're familiar with uh, HWBot and you're always going to the main page to check what's going on and the latest news, you will see that you have to scroll quite down actually to, to reach the, the news, right? So there's a lot of competitions going on. We're going to focus on uh, some of the ones that are just about to close and the ones that uh, got announced or started within the last weeks or so. So a few interesting things there and then we're going to talk about some competition in Germany that is going to come up around the same time than the World Tour Europe so actually just a week after that and right now they are holding some quali uh, qualifiers so we're going to check that out and share a little bit of a little bit more information so what we know from now we don't know everything yet cool and uh, today with us as a special guest we will have Mr. Dennis Garcia welcome Dennis hey. How you doing? How's it doing? Good, great. Good, good, good. Yeah. So, Dennis, you're from uh, Adwar Asylum. You're like a regular guest uh, with us here at the OC show and some of the uh, overclocking TV streams. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for the people that jo just join us on the Twitch channel, uh, welcome. And uh, could you introduce yourself for, for these new people? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm Dennis Garcia, editor-in-chief of HardwareAsylum.com. It's an enthusiast-level hardware review website. We deal a lot with high-end uh, motherboards, video cards, cooling, and uh, a special interest in overclocking. Okay. Well, so. that's, that sounds great. That sounds great. <laughs> um, and we have to say, we have to say, because I missed it last week, we have to say that you're hosting a podcast regularly, right? So what is that podca podcast about? Where can people find it? Uh, all right. When is your next episode, for instance? Okay. Well, uh, as you mentioned, it's the Hardware Asylum podcast, and it's, a, again, a kind of a podcast about overclocking and reviews and games and just kind of enthusiast-level stuff. The podcast, you can find that at hardwareasylum.com. Up at the very top, you'll find a link to podcast that will give you the latest episode. From there, you can get an RSS to um, subscribe via iTunes, or you can just go directly to iTunes. The next show comes out on the 10th of this month, and then we have an extra, which is kind of a raw, uncut uh, version of uh, Darren and I just kind of talking about random tech stuff. And that comes out on the 24th, about halfway through the month. Oh, sweet. So that's going to be like two podcasts we send during the, uh, during the, during the month. Um, mm -hmm. One thing about the podcast thing, uh, we want to tell you that the OC Show, pod, the, the video cast and podcast now, uh, is available on SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had a talk after the, actually the last week's episode or the week before about yeah, doing sharing more the, the podcast in more different ways and we wanted to share it as well as in audio for the good. For those of you that like to just listen it uh, while working out or going to work, you know, anything related to keep pushing it is really good. <laughs> like that, right? so, Always keep pushing it, right? Yeah, so you can find it on SoundCloud. Just uh, search for DLC show and you will find it there with all the latest episode uploaded. Actually, um, the username is called The Overclocking Show, as you can see right now. Yeah. So that's the, that's the audio part of what you've just seen before. It's not the... Uh, audio of the uh, the actual whole uh, live stream we are doing right now because no. it's, it's just like the recorded show yeah. that you guys saw right before this uh, live Q&A 
that was uh, a matter of just making sure that uh, everyone can listen to that, even if you're just taking the subway and don't have the time to watch the video completely. Yeah, and keeping up with what's going on within 10 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> first topic of the day. Yeah, so there were two in North America. That's what we did uh, last weekend. That's why we maybe look tired as well. Um, that's why we also look very tired in what... Hello, hello. Hey, hey we are back. back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I I tripped on something and we just cut the sound, and, but now it's, uh, yeah. it's back. Thank you, Less Than Pro, for uh, telling us on the Twitch chat. Yep, sorry about that. So we should start again with what actually happened uh, at the LAN ETS. Okay, so, so let's rewind <laughs> and go back to the start. And we are back. <laughs> Yes. So yes, we we attend the, the LAN ETS here in Mont in Montreal for the hosting the the HW World Tour. So this uh, World Tour was about um, mainly hosting a gathering for extreme overclockers used to um, using liquid nitrogen then for benching. So they could attend and bench whatever they wanted for three days. Uh, we also had a small competition for those overclockers that could um, yeah challenge each other. By the, the, everyone that was and attending, only for them. amateurs, so only people with no extreme. Uh, I'm talking here yeah, about the extreme guys, but yeah, mm -hmm. the amateurs there they could uh, first take a take on a workshop, uh, where for instance uh, you, uh, Truffman, and uh, Peter from uh, Massman from HI, but could actually um, were teaching the guys about uh, overclocking, how it's working, uh, why it's actually not that difficult, and why it's there's almost no danger for your hardware as well, especially if you do it at the enthusiast or amateur level. And then from that on, they could uh, qualify at the same time for a competition hosted there where only amateurs or only people like them that never tried LN2 before could compete in. That, that actually was great. Nice event. Um, uh, the feedback from the, from the people were uh, interesting. They all liked uh, like yeah. this kind of event, like especially the, the amateur that got um, like a, a free... It's basically a free training for overclocking. 
um, we, we saw some people either from like the amateur, uh, like being just visitors coming by and just having some fun. We're gonna see later that one of them end up pretty high in the qualifier for the amateur, the World Series for amateurs. Yep. And uh, there was also some gamers that, um, as we said earlier, but we're not sure that you guys heard that, that the LAN ETS is running a lot of different contests. And some of the gamers don't even come for, um, they come to play games, but they don't come to compete in some of the games. They just come here and compete in some of the local contests. They have like a scavenger and they have some uh, some challenges of you have an, an Oreo uh, cake on, on your forehead and you have to eat, try to eat that one without using your hands. Yeah, and the price for this is something like a headset or things like that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's still, a good spot. Very fun land party in, in in general, and we had a great time there. Very very cool. So uh, so I, I wanted to ask Dennis. Um, you you said that uh, when we were preparing the show that you were watching from time to time the live stream. What did you mm -hmm. thought about what you saw on the live stream, for instance? Um, well, I just tuned in when you kind of had the cams overall, just showing the um, the amateur competition. Okay. So it was it was kind of neat to see that there was actually people doing stuff. Um, you know, the camera was trained on somebody for a really long time, and I'm not exactly sure who it was. But um, it was cool to watch him, you know, go through the, the motions of, you know, chilling the, the CPU down, running a test, having it crash, to go back into the BIOS, and then, you know, the iterative process of getting an overclock stable so that you can complete a benchmark. Hmm. So, yeah. But, uh, did you watch the, was, the final for the amateur with the uh, with the screens from the uh, X2 benchmark? No, I wasn't around for that one, unfortunately. But um, I tuned in just kind of off and on for about fifteen minutes every once in a while, every couple of hours. I did miss the amateur competition, though. I kind of feel bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to uh, keep up with everything. It's true, especially when the live stream lasts for. Uh, like, something like 12 or almost 24 7 actually mm -hmm. it's really hard to tune in at the, the right time i suppose it's yeah not that easy. well in the, the times that i did tune in you guys were doing a really good job of um you know keeping it going so <laughs> yeah we're trying to kind of do everything you know like the live stream the workshop welcoming the guys fixing out whatever problems there were for you know sometimes there's a like, cable missing here like a power supply <laughs> needed to be replaced whatever you know it's like <laughs> Usually but everything happens fun, at once. You know, we also give some uh, some training to the guys uh, yeah. to, to make sure that there's no issue when they use the uh, liquid nitrogen. So for the uh, not for the amateur, of course, but for the uh, extreme guys. So that was actually like quite interesting to have like all these uh, even wrap up in uh, in all that. Yeah. So that was for, for that, but let's talk about the competition that did happen during the World Series. Yeah, so like uh, we mentioned quickly, there were two competitions, basically. There were, uh, and the first one was the one for... Uh, uh, the extreme guys, so the guys that were attending for the bench party and being there for mainly having fun with uh, liquid nitrogen. Mm. So for those guys, we had prepared a competition which was hosted on the OCE Sports website and basically they could submit in three different stages um, and eventually uh, win some prizes. We had some pretty cool prizes such as uh, bench tables by Dimatech, but we also had the guys from Overclock.net, which are a partner of the event, uh, provided also some 290X uh, graphics cards. Yeah. So, for instance, the first guy won three cards, the second one two cards, and the third one one card. So it's, it was a it's pretty cool prize for yeah, such a competition. It's, it's yeah, it's a decent prize to, uh, to, to make yourself like drive eight hours to come to this event and just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was for the, for the complete weekend. Yeah, for, it was definitely worth it. So the competition, you had three stages. The first stage uh, was quite interesting because it was a hardware point based stage. So you had <laughs> to run a super pie in here. Uh, the point was to whatever rig you were using, so no matter what hardware or what our CPU architecture you were using, uh, you could participate and you could, um, it was the points you would earn were based on how much or how good your submission was in your hardware category in comparison to the whole HWBot database. So depending on the amount of HWBot points you were getting for your submissions, the hardware points were used for this competition as a point calculation. So the hardware point is something you get when you compete in a category that is highly competitive. So that means yes. there's a lot of submissions and it's uh, m much more difficult to go to the top when there's a lot of submissions rather than when there's only two yeah. other guys pinching the same hardware as you. That's it. So the more, pop the more popular the hardware you are using is, the more it is difficult to get 
into the top but then the more points you can actually get so if you think for example here at Westpers uh, from North Canada uh, he got 33.2 hardware points for this score but he used that uh, E5200 CPU, which was quite popular back then. You have to remember, this is this is CPUs from the Asus Rampage Extreme first edition motherboard, right? So this so is that was like few years back. I think it's about almost five years. Ago, almost fi almost yeah. five to six years. Yeah. So this is pretty old hardware, but see, you can still win one stage of a competition with such a hardware. It's all about how how good you can actually score, and usually. Um, all the focus nowadays is always on the new hardware because this is what is kind of driving uh, overclocking. But there's there's always space in the old hardware segments to, to do something great no matter what hardware you have. So it's always interesting to look what you have at home, you know, and when you attend an event like this, just uh, maybe, you know, I can do something with that. It's it's maybe old, but it doesn't matter. It's still fun to bench. And uh, to, to gain that many points, he is actually third using the Pentium E5200 yep. uh, to score in Super Pi 1M. So that's why you got that many points. And for for instance, if we look at the the second the second spot by G145, uh, he's using uh, a more... Uh, more recent hardware. A more recent hardware. So there's actually less people competing in that category. Uh, that was the Phenom 2 X4 955 uh, Black Edition, like a special unlock one from uh, AMD back in the days. Mm. Uh, almost same frequency, and uh, and he still managed to be second. While Mark 0053 was using a very recent CPU, the 4790K, uh, Devil's Canyon uh, CPU from Intel, and he is actually 30 30 seconds in um, in in the total ranking for this CPU. So that that's why it makes it uh, much more difficult to gain hardware points uh, with the recent hardware. Yeah. Actually, it's not the recent. Like, no, it's not the most popular that, uh, hardware. Yeah, most popular hardware. So the the guys did rank inside between them in the competitions against their overall uh, ranking worldwide. So it yeah. was actually interesting to see. What do you think, uh, Dennis, about doing a competition like that where you earn hardware points and that this is what are your point counts for the competition? It's um it's an interesting take on it actually because um you know when you're when you're building a team on hardware bot for instance if you're kind of a, a newbie to this you can get a lot of points by benching old hardware that's actually relatively inexpensive you just go and grab a bunch of 775 processors and then bench them for hardware points and that will build your um you know pad your scores and um, kind of move your team up in the ranks at least so you won't be at the end when it comes to a live overclocking competition like this um you have some people that have like extremely new hardware where there isn't a lot of hardware points and you have a theoretical maximum of points that you can actually get. Whereas if you bring something old and something off the shelf, you don't have to really overclock it very high to be able to beat people that have some of the latest stuff that isn't very competitive. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a give and take. Yeah. It's always the same thing. If you, you can be first using that hardware, but if there's only three other people using it, like what's what's the weight of that uh, like being first? But if you're first when there's like two thousand people using the same hardware and the same benchmark as you, that means mm -hmm. that you stand out. Uh, uh, you stand out of the crowd, like out of that crowd of two thousand people, and you're yeah. first in that one. So yeah, it's yep. definitely worth the effort. Indeed. <laughs> uh, the second stage was a target score. Yeah, so for that stage, uh, it was actually pretty funny because uh, the way it worked is that uh, we selected uh, six different benchmarks. Uh, so you have uh, you had all sorts of 3D benchmarks. You had uh, some 3D marks, you have Unit Giant Heaven, you had some Godzilla stuff. And for each, we had a pre-selected a range of score that would be uh, where the target would be picked on. So. Uh, and how we did it at the event, um, when the, at 2 p.m. when that uh, stage uh, started, uh, we basically selected the benchmark, randomly drawn around among the list of six benchmarks, and then we did the same thing with the target. So in between the two, uh, the maximum and the minimum target, we just selected one random number. And um, th it ended up being Unit Giant Heaven with a target score of 3,510. Uh, 30, 3, 3, so... I think people liked this one because uh, everyone was kind of um, hoping it would not be one benchmark and more hoping it was the other. But in the end, Unigine had a... I don't know, pretty much a, like the, the overall uh, consent of, of everyone else. Yeah, it's usually a benchmark which uh, no one really too much complains about, especially in that case. 
and yeah, it, it run run out pretty well. And I think that was the most popular stage of the whole competition. That's what people said. It, that's where they had the most fun, actually. So in that stage, yeah, that's, that's uh, a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you like the uh, before going to the uh, like the three guys that uh, did submit scores in that stage? Uh, how do you think that the target score and the, and the benchmark can go, Dennis? I I think this is going to be kind of the future of live competition really you know as you mentioned it's one of, it was one of the most popular stages and it's something that is somewhat hardware independent so you can bring old hardware and still be competitive because it's a matter of reaching a score um, you just have to make sure that the hardware you do select will will do that you know obviously yeah, as long you, as you can reach uh, the at least some part of the target you have a chance to uh, to compete there mm -hmm. yeah so it it kind of levels the playing field and makes it more skill based instead of, you know, bin based, you know, how much money you've spent and how long you've spent, you know, running your hardware. So, um, and, and it also opens it up for people with bringing their own stuff. So I kind of like that. And I'm glad to hear that they, uh, the competitors that were running this, um, really liked it. So far, there was uh, three people out of the six that did compete, uh, that, yeah. uh, at the time to submit the scores, that was the only <laughs> stage that was a uh, time uh, with a time frame. So you had like yeah. three hours to do this. You have three hours uh, to do and to reach that target. So for three hours, we know that all the guys bench Uni Giant. They just benched this for three hours. Mm -hmm. So in the end, uh, we had a Johan 45 finishing third with a 30, uh, like 0.5 uh, close to the I scores. Am. And uh, then we had uh, Raspate that actually uh, yep. finished uh, first at the stage one. That was like 0 0.3 uh, yeah. close. And the most impressive score was actually uh, Jigsman 1965. Uh, it's not 0 0.01, actually it's 0 0.06. Yeah. 0 0.06. Yeah, it that was, was so close. It was so close. And he actually uh, hit that score very, very early on. And he spent the rest of the maybe two hours and a half really trying to to tweak his system because actually the graphics card he was using was too strong he was using the the gdx 980 so for him it was actually very easy at stock to actually beat that score so for him he had to actually down clock and play with the memory timing somehow to slow down his card so he could <laughs> hit the target and that's where it's not it's not called tweaking it's reverse tweaking or something <laughs> like this it's like you have to do exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do when you're trying to improve a score that is stalling and not going up so yeah i think even him doing this he had a, a lot of fun doing it and yeah. it was pretty cool so, well there was a total of six overclockers competing right yeah yeah in the world so, series at the north america stuff there was six uh, people uh, that wanted to compete in the uh, yeah in the yeah, full so world series for that what happened to the other three guys were they just benching um, and they uh, just actually some of them there's one uh, one of the guys uh, for quebec uh, nxxo uh, i was actually expecting to see him there uh, he got uh, he got a call at work and he ended up in the US for for working like uh, for for like, like six or seven days and he could not make it back just for the weekend. Yeah. Mm. So some uh, some stuff like that. And then some of the other uh, other guys uh, were not interested in participating. There was some guys that were just starting LN2 as well and didn't necessarily had a a graphics card to bench. So yeah, in the end, only three three people could take on that that specific stage and the competition yeah. in general. Uh, stage three. Uh, I think I lost the. <laughs> I you lost I, the page. I lost I, the page. I do <laughs> remember what stage three is about, and this is about. Uh, it was a Cinebench R15, full out. It was full out. So, like you say, this means um, no limitations on neither hardware, neither top score, neither frequency, just nothing. You just run Cinebench as as fast as strong as you can, and this stage was a, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was um it, w it was a stage that was also like the uh, super prize stage uh, running during the whole duration of the event so there was a lot of time to actually so they had no restriction on time to submit yeah, this question lot, that. do you have I the, mean, the last restriction was this is when you start the event and this is when we end the events and it's like like almost two days non-stop right yeah that's it yeah so four people participated in that one and uh yeah mark um Mark zero zero fifty three actually yeah took the the first place in this one, and he, he was using the forty seven ninety k CPU, the yeah. Devil's Canyon, like Very one of the latest. The one. same CPU yeah. he used for the um, yeah for the Super Pi one. 
Uh, it was at a 5.6, almost 5.7 gigahertz for for that one. And of course, that was using liquid nitrogen. Yeah, of course. Like uh, <laughs> all the participants were using liquid nitrogen. Yes. <laughs> Uh, overall, the the world tour was a, a nice experience, and we had a lot of the amateurs attending at the same time. Yeah. So but you should say who won that competition first. Oh, sh <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you know you compete, but it's always nice to win, right? So, uh, so if you scroll up, you will see who actually won. And uh, Raspard ranked first in that competition. Then you had uh, Johan forty five. Uh, Jickman and Mark and then the, the two other guys that didn't participate in that one. So in, in the end, um, all of them uh, got, went home through some uh, Dimatek bench table, with, uh, which I guess is always a nice thing. Uh, for the first place, you could um, you got a, a bigger bench table. You had the easy version. Which yeah, is because uh, was, was version. providing the small one. It was the mini and one, yes. Yeah, the mini one, and uh, we had like one of the big one that was especially for the winner of the World Series. Yeah, so for the, the the top prize was the bigger one, and then three graphics cards, like we mentioned before, and then Johan got another one mini one, two graphics cards, and Jigman one mini one and one graphic card. So pretty cool. And I think in the end everyone went home with uh, some bench tables because there was some bench tables left. Yeah. Uh, like uh, then we had one for the lucky draw. There was a the lucky draw, yeah. uh, was uh, someone that didn't add one. So yeah, pretty much everyone went on with something. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So Raspath finished first with sixty point uh, sixty three point two points, <laughs> and uh, he actually went back home with like a domestic table, three graphic cards, uh, uh, some of uh, some of the, some t shirts all at the same time. Um, that was actually fun, and he really liked it. He even sent us an email uh, this morning to to thank us for yeah. Like, two people actually, even uh, Jackman sent an email this morning, which was very nice, saying yeah, it was a great event. He had a, a lot of fun and suggesting a few things to improve the next one. And he might actually consider coming to the Europe one because he's living in Germany. So hey, why not? I mean, you know, it's always good. It's always good to see this be, uh, the people being like uh, pleased with uh, with this kind of events and, and competitions. And so far, the feedback for the competition was like everyone liked the way that the hardware point are involved, the full out is involved at one point, and the target is involved at one point. So you have like the skills compared to everyone, the skills compared to the best, and the skills on the targeting and the tweaking. So that's like a a very really large, uh, a broad uh, skills uh, or competitions. So people yeah. really liked it. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. Very good. So, so that's it for the World Series now for you Extreme. Can, now you can now move on to, to the amateurs. <laughs> I'm not going to come back for anything of that. Um, so like you mentioned, amateur one, uh, This uh, the first step uh, before you could enter that one was to take on a workshop. And that workshop was... Uh, uh, was actually made by you and uh, Peter. So what you guys did were was uh, welcoming the the gamers and the visitors uh, coming uh, to check out the um, the OC room, and um, basically giving them a very basic training of overclocking. When I mean basic, it's super basic. It's only CPU overclocking. And, you know, when you actually are not aware of anything about computers or anything of how it works. There's no need to go beyond that and talk about memory timings or just X and No need. Stuff. I mean, the, the focus was we can teach people yep. in less than 20 minutes on how the computer works and how to overclock, uh, to overclock it, submit your scores and compete in the competitions. Yeah. So actually, it's like it's less than 10 minutes to tell you this is what you have to change to overclock your CPU and these are the settings that do impact on your performances. That's it. And, and the 10 last minutes, like, okay, this is how you can submit for a competition. This is what you should do for these competitions. And uh, this is the qualifier th system. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <Zoom> <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it went pretty well. I think um, most of the guys very quickly uh, got the grabs of uh, how fun it was, especially uh, most of the guys came by groups of uh, three or four friends that were attending the LAN party together. So they were taking on the workshop together. There were even some uh, some kids coming with their dads uh, checking out the LAN party and they came to check out the booth and take a, like, a little workshop. And so most of the guys that came as friends were after the workshop having a hands-on time where they could actually practice by themselves and not just having someone click for them. And most of them even already at the practice time were trying to compete among each other. Hey, how, how much did you get? Hey, look, I got that much, but I have a lower frequency. What does that mean? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And so actually that was like the, the overclocking the CPU and getting your score was like the, yeah. the, 
the first part of the training, then the second part is like you ask questions. Hey, why, why is he running at four point four gigahertz and me too? And you got a better score than me. And okay, it's because you have more settings on just the CPU that to impact the score. Oh well, yeah, explaining how the efficiency thing is a factor and why it's important to take it into account. It's not all about getting just the highest clock on the system, right? It's way more than that. So yeah, the guys participated, had a hands-on time, and then they were having 30 minutes to qualify by themselves, so no help, no nothing, for the competition that was the finals on the on the second day. So um, I think in total, 18 people uh, participated into the, the qualifiers. Uh, yeah, it's 18 without the, the, the trainers. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so there's a lot of people taking the workshop, uh, but there's uh, only some of them that had the time to come, to just try the system for 30 minutes and compete in the qualifier for, for that. And uh, along that, there was like uh, all these uh, people were like, oh, yeah, that's that's cool. I didn't want to try on my own computers, but here, okay, I can I can do this. It's okay. I don't mind if I just burn my C the, the the systems. I have no risk at all. <laughs> and mean, actually, we, no, and we told no them one burned that, anything. You know, we told them there is no way you, you it's can almost burn. impossible to destroy yeah. hardware. So, <laughs> so if we if we so all the competition were happening on, uh, of course, at the uh, OC dash esports.io website, OC Esports IO website. Yeah, uh, that's the website where you can find all the overclocking competitions online. Yeah, so you can see the, the ranking. So this is the, the ranking of the qualifiers. And most of the guys did really, really well. You know, it was really fun to see them actually qualify and having fun at overclocking for the very first time. <laughs> and so underscore, uh, underscore finished first. So uh, this guy is someone you already knew, Truffman. And uh, then there was uh, Vincent, I think. That's yeah, how you should pronounce it. Vincent. Vincent, yeah, yeah Vincent. Yeah, well, that's his nickname. And then you have a uh, Simerizer and X three hundred X, and so all those guys they qualified, and the top six was selected for the the finals on the second day. But in the end, uh, because there were some gaming finals at the same yeah. time, four only could actually make it. So we redesigned quickly the competition in the last minute. Thanks and to Massman because he yeah. did a great job on that. He found and out super the best fair, actually, way. It was yeah. excellent. It was uh, you had the. Uh, he made this huge grid on the on the board where you could uh, eventually the way how it was planned is that all four of the competitors could compete on all the four different systems at the uh, at the venue we had for the competition and we're also facing off all the different overclockers so all the three others competitors against them so it was totally fair you had your chance at everything and in the end you were winning uh, one point for each match you were playing so if you win the match you get one point move on to the next match etc etc so here you can see the, the the match result board and it was super super tight um besides for one of the guy that um ron 154 actually he had to leave the competition of overclocking to go to one of the competitions for lol i think, I think there was yeah he was into some league of legends stuff so so in the end, uh, the top three guys were really, really Very super close. close. So, so close, they all had the same score in the end. And so the tiebreaker was um, some of uh, the best scores you could obtain. So the actual best uh, XTU score you would get in the earliest scores on the on the mm -hmm. ranking board. So that's how it worked out. So so in the end, uh, we had uh, Vincent finishing uh, winning the. The, the World Series for Amateur at the HW World Tour for uh, North America. Yeah. And he went back home with some uh, great prize from uh, Microbytes. Because yeah. actually Microbytes was providing all the systems for uh, for, for the competition. So uh, they provide the same CPU for everyone, the G3258. Uh, they provide the, the main board for the workshop and the competition systems and so on. Yeah. And uh as prize the guys went back home it's like it's a complete amateur that guy never overclocked before he didn't he, he never wanted to overclock his own uh computers uh, because he was fearing that he could like damage it and then we explained them that no you have no risk for that and i uh, went back home with like a, with the bench table the psu a main board a cpu and almost uh everything else like a t-shirt and so on that he would need for uh, for starting at three to just try out what's going on for overclocking on not your hardware but the second one. Uh, everyone from the fourth, uh, for the four people, went back home with something because actually the, we had a much more, much enough price for everyone. And I would actually like to thank uh, Microbus for the price as well as uh, Dimastek. Yep. Uh, they it was very cool for price bundle and very, very, very sweet of them to to sponsor those prices. 
Um, yeah, what well, Dennis? What do you think about that that kind of amateur competition, especially in that kind of layout where four guys face all each other on four different systems, etc. Yeah, you know, I it's one of those that you have to try it out, and I haven't ever tried anything like that before. But uh, you know, I, in theory, it sounds good. Although, as you can tell from the scores, they were all pretty much the same. So. Um, so I think the guy were missing a bit of experience to uh, make a difference. Yeah, there was, um, you know, if they get in and start actually tweaking little micro settings, then obviously they could, um, you know, edge out and actually get a higher score than somebody else. But, um, you know, if they only had maybe an hour, two hours worth of time before they started actually overclocking, then, you know, they're not going to know that stuff. So uh, For sure, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, like you say, it's true. Um, most of the guys that were mainly tweaking, you know, like uh, voltage and uh, uh, base clock and uh, multiplier and trying maybe a few of the other sliders, but not really knowing exactly what it would do or what it would impact. And no mm -hmm. one was actually tweaking the memory at all. So no one, uh, we didn't have the time in the workshop to even go into the BIOS and go that far, you know. And the, the, the goal so for the workshop was like in, in 20 minutes, you know how to, go, to overclock the CPU and how to compete online. So yeah. that was that was the code of the workshop, and it turned out that uh, quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. in in the workshop though, did you talk about how temperature comes into play with the the base clock increases and whatnot? Uh, we did uh, we did talk about like the few limitations. So uh, we tell them that okay, if you need to overclock your CPU, these uh, these are the settings that you should look at, like the the, the multiplier, the reference clock, and uh, the V core. Basically, that's the first that's gonna be limiting you. And then we tell them, oh, you know that if you hit a uh, higher temperature, the CPU gonna start throttling. So basically, it's like yeah. oh, don't go too high, otherwise your score gonna be crap because <laughs> it's too high. And, yeah, uh, it's and, and, and yeah, all the guys were actually like checking like uh, like this is the, uh, the the multiplier I have, this is the frequency, the base frequency I have, and this is the V core I applied. This is the final temperature during the benchmark and so on. So yeah, that was yeah, uh, yeah. great to for, see the guys. For an like, introduction uh, in a very very uh, entry level amateur competition was really really great. Mm -hmm. So that was for the uh, LAN ETS, so the Asia Bubot World Tour North America. What's next? Well, what's next is Europe, you know, um, so right now we are here in Montreal, we're going to pack our stuff uh, by Wednesday, go back to Taipei, and in three weeks we are almost uh, arrived in uh, Europe in the city of Poitiers, and this one is going to be um, a very similar event, because we are going to do exactly the same um, three different activities, so there's going to be the bench party, there's going to be a workshop for amateurs, and there will be a World Series competitions for uh, for both uh, extreme and amateurs um, so the at the gamers assembly that's the biggest LAN party in France they have 2,000 gamers so that's already double the size of the LAN ETS and what is going to be cool is that uh, instead of being into um, in a room we'll be sitting right next to the gamer on the gaming hall so uh, there will be pretty much people probably checking out what we are doing um, for half like half more than half the time because yeah. even during the night there will be probably people coming around so if you're a gamer attending the gamer assembly come say hi you're welcome <laughs> if you don't we will know you didn't <laughs> <laughs> if you're visitors at the gamer assembly come say hi too you can come say hi too yes so if you um, uh, if you attend the gamer assembly for no re for any reason then there's no reason to not come check out the OC booth. It's going to be really fun. So the Gamers Assembly is in Poitiers yes. on the, the Eastern weekend. So it's uh, four, four, to six of April. 4 to 6 of April. Uh, everyone is welcome for the workshop, uh, gamers and visitors. If you're visitors, you just need the tickets at the, at the entrance and that's it. Just yep. to, to check all the booth and so on. And um, do we know some of the people that are going to be attending the event? Uh, yeah, we know that, um, for instance, uh, many people that are going to attend or are already registered right now are French guys. Uh, of course, because it's in France, it's easier to wait, to go there. But it's but open to everyone in Europe. Yeah, it's open to everyone. So, but mainly right now, uh, French people have subscribed uh, for attending the event. So you have uh, people from both uh, big French teams, Crocodland and Clan OC. Uh, so those are actually the two, two top teams in France and very active teams filled with... Uh, new uh new new overclockers are very recently 
uh, gotten overclockers overclockers and those guys um, are really active and really uh, excited about the event and they already arranged to rent a whole house that looks more like a castle than a house and um, there will be like 10 10 or 15 people in there it's going to be some some crazy stuff and then we have some uh, more international guys so we have um, some guys from Belgium such as Glickhoff uh, we have some guys from Germany like Roman uh, or the known also at the, as their bauer that is going to attend and uh, maybe even some I was talking to some Danish guys today like Zizolio that are considering to mm -hmm. attend the event they're just trying to find a way to um, uh, share a ride to go to Poitiers so you know I think things are starting to get into place and um, for European overclock it's, it's truly very easy and accessible to go to Poitiers if you're driving you always find someone on your way driving to the same place so you can just do half half for whatever the cost and you they can have take a, big a train station plane and train station yeah. it's like a, you can go by road plane or train you're actually only two hours by a high-speed train from Paris airport mm. straight direct train so you don't need to change or anything so don't be scared of uh, the French language everywhere you don't need to speak to anyone probably um, so <laughs> you know everything is fine <laughs> That's a good idea the French accent. Uh, yeah, but welcome to France. <laughs> <laughs> so to all the overclockers that want to attend uh, the the world the Egibert World Tour, yes. uh, not the amateurs. Like the if you want to bench, have a spot there, like a, a seat, uh, the power and everything there. Uh, you have two kind of tickets. Yeah, you have two kinds of tickets for the gamers assembly. Uh, you can purchase them on the gamers assembly website. Uh, the website is uh, has a French and English version, so. No, no problem on that. No problem on that. And so the first ticket is a uh, LN2 ticket, exactly uh, similar to what the guys here uh, had to purchase for participating to the event. It's so that means you pay the tickets and you get a, a space like a yeah, you, like you, you said, you have a desk, power, unlimited LN2 for the weekend. That's it. So you have a um, you have that uh, ticket, and then you have another ticket which is uh, for guys that want. Uh, that are not sure uh, to do LN2 or anything, but they want to come and uh, bench on air cooling or water cooling or things like that and learn from the guys that are there as extreme overclockers. So, you know, start discussing insulation, start more like, hey, I have... Because, you know, when you start overclocking, usually you start on air and water cooling and only if really, really you want to push ahead, you're going to move to LN2. So... This is the occasion for those guys to actually uh, see how LN2 works. Maybe eventually over the during the night learn how to insulate their board and what next time it's going to be LN2. So that's that's cool. So there's one ticket for unlimited LN2. So if you're extreme and want to try the extreme, you can uh, get there. Uh, yeah. And there's one ticket for air and water cooling. So if you just want to be there to overclock your 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 system and just no more. You can also get one ticket for that. Actually, that one's a bit cheaper. Yeah, slightly and you cheaper. Can, you can always cheaper, upgrade yeah. to the. Uh, I, I think we should check, but we we could probably upgrade yeah, to get I the. I think we can arrange that. Yeah, if you if you go and you end up having someone lending you some parts and you know. It's no, it's not really a problem. Talking about landing CPU pods and GPU pods, uh, Overclocking TV is providing some of our own hardware for the overclockers, especially like cooling gears. Yep. Uh, so we, we have, have two, similar, two CPU have, pods yeah. and I think four GPU yeah, pods. Two CPU pods, four GPU pods. If you want, uh, if you need any of them because you don't have it yet, that's going to be your first time using uh, liquid nitrogen. Yep. Uh, just try to reach us on uh, Facebook or uh, through the contact page on overclockingtv.com and uh, we will try to arrange that if we have uh, one left for that. Um, that was actually something we did here at the LAN ETS event. Uh, there was two guys that was the first time they tried, uh, they tried liquid nitrogen and uh, we did uh, like lend them some of our uh, cooling gears for that. So if you want to try, just let us know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, right now I think there's uh, one CPU part left and two GPU or three GPU parts left. Still anyway, for grabs, so. just come and ask and we'll tell you if we can do something. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, Dennis, uh, too yeah. bad uh, you're in the US. There's going to be uh, actually on the other side of America the, than we are today. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a bit too far for you to come to Europe, but uh, are you going to watch the live stream? Yeah, I'm going to try to watch the live stream. I mean, I always like to see what's going on. Um, I was just reminded that CBIT happens around that time as well, but that's, that's in correct. Germany. Yes. Um, yeah, CBIT is around... Isn't CBIT um, right now? No, no, CBIT is the uh, first week of March, I think, or something like that. Usually, 
if well, like, it is March. Yeah, so I, th I think it's 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 oh it's yeah, right. Next we are week, in March something like this. It's done yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's how weeks. bad people doesn't care about Cebit anymore. I think it's just uh, Cebit right now is. Um, it used to be very computer focused for quite a while and I think now it's mainly focusing back on its actual roots which are uh, industrial equipment or equipment for um, hospitals stuff yeah like you know when you buy like a uh, heater stuff and uh, maybe slightly home automations probably but not not so much it's uh, yeah not it used to be big but sadly it went down in favor of uh, CES in January and Computex in June I think yeah it's mainly the the release dates of the hardware vendors they were it was not so colliding so much anymore with Cebit time so that's that's why the the show ended up like this at least for us yeah, well it was always um vaporware so it was yeah. the pre-release pre stuff that was being shown yeah, so pre-release stuff or stuff that is going to be re re released or not <laughs> <laughs> or not <laughs> but it was it was a great show where you could see some from time to time some nda unreleased stuff as well <laughs> So before we go switch to the next topic that's going to be the few competition online uh, let's watch again the trailer of the HW World Tour and we are waiting for you guys to attend the European one or be on the live stream in the Eastern weekend Welcome back everyone, we are in the, the OC Show live Q&A right now on Twitch.tv. Uh, I'm Truthman, here's Chella and uh, right uh, on the other side of the screen is Denise Garcia from Ara Asylum. And hey. we are talking about what's going on in the overclocking community for the past two weeks because uh, this uh, thing, we're doing that every two weeks. Yeah, so exactly. And um, so let's move on with the competition. And uh, there's quite a lot of things going on. Uh, first thing to talk about is the MSI uh, Beat the Fastest competition. I remember two weeks ago, uh, Dennis introduced the competition to us. And uh, <laughs> so this one is about to end. So Dennis, um, have you checked the, followed the competition a little bit? And uh, how, how did it go so far? You know, I, I have to be honest here, I did not follow it as closely as I probably should have. <laughs> so I, I was watching the, the Gigabyte competition, actually, that's happening at the same time. All right. I'll talk about that one right after, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. the MSI one is finishing in nine hours, so it's pretty much what we would call the popcorn in, in, done. 20 yeah. hours. So 20 hours. Done. So there's actually 39 overclockers competing in uh, these competitions, yep. and there's only 20 hours left. So as you say, that's what we call the popcorn time. Uh, basically, the popcorn time is when everyone is trying to submit the scores just before the end and making sure that uh, they stay and get in the first uh, first place. Yeah, online uh, competitions are quite a lot like poker where you have to have your poker face until the end and then you show your cards on the, uh, the last minute. You always have to show them. No cards, no yeah. score, no If goal. you don't show your card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this, um, there's a quite a few overclockers uh, involved in this competition actually. Um, three stages: CPU frequency, XTU, W prime. And uh, right now we can't say much more than the ranking you are seeing on the screen. So uh, um, we have a Swedish guy in the first place, Ralph. We have a Wizardy French guy in the second place, and Dr. that's gonna happen. The European? Uh, are you? Are you gonna gonna happen? The yeah. to be at the European uh, will stop be there, for the water. Um, yeah. And Dr. Wies from South Africa. Africa. So, for now, that's that's it. There's that's still some guys that haven't submitted the, the stage one score, so I guess um, be patient. Things are probably going to move. <laughs> I don't think that uh, some people are gonna submit that one because I, I think it's already closed by oh, now. Yeah, the stage was closing Oops. earlier. Yeah, the, that stage oh, yeah. was so actually uh, that uh, the stage one was limited in time, uh, so most of the uh, top of Oculus didn't have the time to submit the right scores and that's the reason why Wizard T doesn't have uh, any points there but he still managed to be second so that means that his uh, stage 2 and stage 3 are very impressive uh, that would be interesting to see Rolf to, from Sweden to end up first because actually I, I never heard of him before and seems to be like uh, one of the uh, yeah. new Swedish and new Nordics uh, guys to, uh, to we'll see how that ends yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, 
as we know, popcorn time can change in the last hour of the competition. So yeah, that's it. Like we say, everyone is waiting for the last minute to show the cards. <laughs> <laughs> So, so far, 39 overclockers in the MSI beat the fastest competitions. Uh, you can try to, you can still try to compete there, uh, but uh, good luck for that. It's always good to have the, the lucky draw if there's uh, oh, yeah, some yeah. Uh, hard work to win. Just to read the score there. In... I think the lucky draw, you need to participate in all stages usually, because if not, yeah, it's kind of too, too easy. It's yeah? too easy, right? You could, anyone could submit an XTU score. You have to do a little bit more than that. Talking about XTU, um, there's Gigabyte that is going big on XTU, and this is called the uh, Gigabyte the Z97 X99 Big XTU Challenge. So and it's big. It's big. It's all about XTU, only XTU, and the whole point of this is a target competition, right, Dennis? Yeah, it's um, pretty much the was it three days before the the stage closes, they announce a high and a low range. And you submit scores within that range, and then at the end of it, they pick what the target is, and whoever matched that score gets a point, if I understand it correctly. Mm -hmm. And they do have a different stage. They have stage for like uh, two core CPUs, four core CPUs, six, four, six core CPUs, and yeah. eight core CPUs. Different rounds, yeah. And different yeah, those are the rounds. We have 10 stages. Yeah. So, so all, every exactly. stage is a different target, right? and a different yep. range and so a different set of submissions the guys have to do so eventually you end up doing quite a lot of submission if you want actually to win all the stages all the rounds and all the and the whole thing right yeah i was noticing how um in stage one there was quite a few overclockers that submitted a score but then in stage three i believe it went down to five or something oh 18 so maybe mm. it was stage two yeah, you have to not no, miss yeah, it, right. and you have to be at home for those three days, capable of at least benching a little bit to hope getting the target. Plus, you actually don't know the target, right? So you have to pretty much submit to all possible variation of the of the range to expect to have at least one point. If not, it's mainly just luck. Yeah, well, and I was looking at it. What was stage one? You could submit. 40 different scores because that was the range yeah um that's a lot of running xtu and well, then if you get the same scores what you got before you get to tweak again and run it again just to get that one point difference correct so but that's makes the, it a bit of a challenge that, yeah that's all the thing with the like the target score you need to target a score and and the the, the weirder thing is as you doesn't know the scores you just know the the range for the target and there's the only the only way you can uh, uh, make sure you're gonna have the score is to submit all the scores. Yeah, that's what we mm -hmm. say. It takes a lot of time to do all the forty or whatever. Or possible. you can just try one and just uh, oh okay, I'm gonna have luck this time and just yeah, hope for it. One out of forty is probably not enough to expect to win anything. Still more than playing blackjack, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one cool thing about that competition, Dennis, is that you can actually win a trip to Computex in Taiwan in June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's if you compete in every one of the stages, or yeah. what, every one of the rounds, all four rounds you have to compete yeah. in. So you um, need uh, two platforms and eventually four CPUs. Mm -hmm. And especially like one from the D97 mainboard and uh, CPU yeah. plugging on that circuit, and one from the X99 and CPU plugging on, on that circuit. So for instance, you're going to need a, yeah, like a G258 for the 2X day, uh, 2X round. You're going to need like anything from a 47, uh, yeah, like a Core i7s for the, the, like the second round and, and another one on X99 for the X6 and etc. etc. So... And they are throwing like a four thousand bucks uh, in cash prize at the same time. Yeah, there's um, yep. there's one thousand dollars for each winner of the rounds. So hey. that's that's still interesting to compete in one of the rounds, get a thousand course, bucks. Of course, yes. Get that money, pay for the ticket to Computex <laughs> in case you don't win it. So in the end, the outcome is no matter what you win at this competition, you end up at Computex. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you end up in the third stop of the HWBot World Tour in the, right after Computex. This is all connecting in a magical world. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So, uh, Dennis, are you participating in the Gigabyte one? No, I, uh, I didn't. And this was something <laughs> that I talked about in the podcast episode that will be coming out in the next couple of days. So, right. if anyone wants to find out what my 
what mm, my uh, comments stands. were. You'll have to, have to uh, download it and give it a listen. Uh, what time and what day does that uh, podcast goes out? It normally goes out on the 10th, and it's usually around midnight. Midnight my time, so that's mountain standard. Um, so that's late in the night for all the people in Europe. Right, but if you subscribe to the RSS feed or have it subscribed on iTunes or, or whatnot, it will automatically download the podcast episode for you. So when you wake up, you'll be able to listen. Awesome. Perfect. Full things to do in the yeah. morning. Know what you think about the uh, Big XU channel from Gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> so next com <laughs> competition is also something connected to Computex. And this one is uh, the second edition of the OC World Cup 2015 by Gizgir. And this one is a lot of cash. A lot. That's, a lot. Actually, that's the biggest cash prize for the champion. Like the first one, the, the people to finish first going to have like a... A lot of money to buy yeah. new hardware. Well, yeah, you can win 10k, but uh, for this competition, what is interesting is that, uh, so first of all, you have to qualify online, and uh, you have to pay your own trip to Computex as well. So there's a lot of uh, cash, pr uh, the cash price is high, but you just need to get yourself to Computex. So you basically like compete, qualify, pay your tickets to Computex, but point is, is to make it very high end competition, and then like, you can get 10k if you finish first. Yeah. So the, the the idea is that if you go to Computex, you're already prepared to go there with the the right hardware to uh, be able to hit the right scores in the different stages that are going to be announced. So you're going there for the win. You don't go there for just you know showing up and doing some uh, weird stuff on stage. Well, that's it, because the competition <laughs> is actually on the the show floor of Computex. So. I mean, there's everyone looking at you, so you you'd rather just win it in front of everyone. That's probably the the best the best technique. Mm -hmm. So the qualifiers are open from uh, March 9th, So that was um, actually yesterday. This the today. Oh, that's today. That's actually. today. It's already yeah. It's open and um, until uh, April 13th. So 34 days to go. Right now, two guys are already competing, and I think the standards are already quite high because. Uh, this is a very accessible qualifier. You can compete uh, with a very, very cheap CPU. I mean, you can, I think it's a G3240. That's um, uh, Intel Pentium CPU. And you don't need to, uh, this CPU doesn't has a unlocked multiplier. So, so it's, a, it's a locked CPU and you need to compete for like an extreme competition right after in Computex. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so of course, um, I mean like what is going to happen is that because the CPU is super cheap, what you can do is you can buy more than one eventually, right? So I, thi I think it's around 50, uh, 50 euros or something like this for the, for the chip. So if you are interested into either winning the lucky draw prize or, you know, eventually actually compete seriously and win a trip to, uh, to Computex, uh, win a trip, not win a trip, sorry, qualify for the qualify Computex for finals. The Computex. Well, it's definitely worth the, the small investment that it's... That CPU is, is, is really cheap. I think it's like less than $60. Uh, $60 to yeah, yeah. It's I the G3240. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, that's you need like a Z87 or Z97 mainboard to, to make it run. Yeah. So overall, like the, the cost to compete in this convention is like, yeah, I think that's one of the lowest we ever saw. Yeah, it's the most accessible uh, high-level competition or high-level qualifier to competition I've I've seen so far. So, especially there's no limitation on motherboard, so you can use whatever you have at home where this chip fits on. So Z97 something, and uh, yeah. So the only limitation is use the Z3240 uh, CPU. Yeah. Uh, use a G-Skill memory, and of course the CPU should not be like uh, engineering sample. So that's something you need to. Uh, make sure that it's available to everyone. So that's actually make it fair for everyone to compete. Uh, so far, first person in the ranking is Strategos. And yeah, right now, you know, it's the first day. So, of course, there's some guys uh, submitting some eventually very strong score, hoping to, um, how you say, you know, scare off everyone else. And the score is already pre pretty strong, you know. So it's going to be um, a tough, tough battle for everyone else in there. And uh, I'm pretty sure some guys are already out there kind of binning the chips to, to hope to get uh, something stronger than that. But that's, that's once again, uh, below $60 CPU. The platform itself doesn't cost, uh, cost much. Uh, everyone has a chance to uh, compete and get qualified uh, for, for this competition at Computex. 
and then the best is if you win the, the final at Computex you're gonna get back home with 10k and ten thousand dollars in cash yep money 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 is always <laughs> great <laughs> so that's for uh, all everything happening around Computex but we talked earlier when uh, opening this um, the things about uh, something in uh, Germany yes and this so what's is what's going on in Germany well, so in Germany, um, Asus is pretty active at engaging with the community and um, the week after the World Tour Europe, so the weekend after, they are going to hold the finals of what they are holding the qualifiers for right now. So those qualifiers are hosted on the LC Esports site and uh, so this whole uh, event is called the ROG Camp and um, so it's an overclocking competition organized uh, by Asus in Germany and uh, the main guys behind that are some people we know very well from uh, pcgameshardware.de which is like a very very big uh, overclocking community but also gaming community tech webs uh, tech review kind of website and um, so those guys are behind it and the point of this competition is to have people that never use LN2 um, to compete so qualify and be in um, um, invited to join a camp or like a, a boot camp or I don't know how you would call that and for two OC days camp. two days yeah OC camp yeah and for two days they're invited there and they can uh, be trained on the first day of how to insulate how to uh, use LN2 and you know mess around with the systems and get used to it and on the second day they can actually compete for the finals so, so right now there's uh, seven people in there and um, yeah, it's going to be quite, quite It's only interesting. 10 days, the, 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 uh, actually it's only 8 days that the, uh, the thing is open, the competition is open. Yeah. So there's still a few weeks, actually like there's still 3 weeks to go on and uh, qualify if you're for, uh, from Germany. Yeah, actually not just Germany, this event, um, because Asus in Germany takes care of the, the whole region of Europe where people uh, know or speak German or learn it in school. So you have Germany, Austria, and Switzerland uh, overclockers that can participate in that one. I learned German in school. Can I participate? Uh huh. I learned German in school. Can I participate? No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's your nationality. It's not just uh, because you learned it in school. Because in that, I would already compete in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did in Germany before. <laughs> so, so yeah. So what are the, the different uh, ways you get through this competition? Well, there's five stages. XCU. HWBAT Prime, SuperPi 32M, CPU frequency, and maximum read. So no 3D benchmark, it's all 2D. So the cost of entry is not super high. And um, yeah, the higher you rank, the higher you go. And if you're in the top, you qualify. And uh, that's important to note that uh, the two people organizing that are two people we know and we work with in the past. Uh, that's uh, Tom Lusk, uh, that uh, was... Uh, one of the His editor co, co guests yeah. uh, that we had on the stream at the uh, Overclocking TV when oh, we yeah. did the stream of the Gigabyte EOC last year, if I'm right. Yeah, that was a competition in Germany organized by the second guy you wanted to mention, uh, Roman Hartung, which is also known as Debau, and he's a. Um, He's uh, working for Case King, but he's also having his own business of selling and manufacturing CPU parts for extreme overclocking. And actually GPU parts as well and memory parts. So. And some of them that we could lend to you guys at the HWBot World Tour in Europe in the next months. Um, Dennis, what do you think about all these competitions for amateurs lately? It's a, it's a good year for 2015 for to start overclocking, right? Yeah, it's a great start to get uh, some people that have never been overclocking into the hobby um, and it's kind of weird because you know when I first built my computer you know way way long time ago you had to actually learn how the hardware goes together so you learn a little bit about overclocking but mm. this is also when you're putting jumpers on the board to you know make sure that your processor matched what the configuration was supposed to be and these days, you know, you can you don't necessarily need to know that. So it's really important to get amateurs involved in overclocking so that they can, you know, we can actually fund all this cool overclocking hardware that manufacturers like Asus and MSI and Gigabyte are making for us. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting year indeed. And once all those guys know how to use it and start to actually reach a level where they become very competitive it's gonna be a, a tough battle for the for the top even 
just at the seasonal level of it. You know what I would love to see one of the amateur from this year end up in the top ranking for Extreme next year. Well, actually, right now, if you look up the the rankings for the season, because there's a lot of competitions going on, all the divisions and all that, but not everything is closed yet, right? So you have a lot of the of the um, the guys from the the official World Overclocking ranking of the season 2015 that are actually amateurs at this point, or like amateurs or rookies, novices, or people that. Uh, just started because they either won the competition here at the LAN ETS or participated or are highly ranked in the Division um, 7, which is um, the, um, the G3258 division at the OC Sports. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of room right now still for those guys to um, get motivated from the start, you know, so get the, get hooked on the, the fact that they, they are high ranked in the seasonal ranking and they want to keep the spots when... They are going to have to do the homework and practice a lot because it's going to be very tough once the very strong competitions are are starting, such as MOA, and you have this Chisco one already here for Computex. And there might be also some more stuff coming for HyperX Lister later this year. Who knows? Who knows? And all those competitions that are run during the year, you know, so it's, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, we are almost uh, about to reach a milestone. There is 998 people participating in uh, overclocking competition for the season 2015 so in less than in actually in less than two months and a half there's like almost a thousand people competing in all the competitions that uh, yeah. do happen online uh, that's a lot but it's a lot and it just means that um, there's a uh, quite a lot of interest for it and this is just awesome you know? and as we say the this is just the beginning of the season so even if you didn't start it yet uh, overclocking and competing online you have all your chance. Uh, one of the examples is uh, Vincent. Uh, that's one of the guy that was uh, just registered uh, this weekend, and mm -hmm. that won the World Series for amateurs. Uh, for winning that series, he's already is he's having like 142 points. So that makes him hate in the world regarding the competitions that uh, that happens. And then it's followed by Raspathi that was actually winning the World Series. So these people actually won uh, uh, won the the first part of the World Series and they already get point for that and uh, we can't wait to see how they're gonna end up in the final ranking against everyone else yeah so Tim what do you wanna wrap up all that well I would like to wrap up by saying that it was um, again one more great uh, Q&A show uh, if you guys have uh, any more questions about the topics we discussed today uh, feel free to just um fill in on the chat and we're gonna stay a little bit to answer your questions um, I had a great time here in Montreal Schiffman, doing the event with you and um, I think uh, I'm looking really forward to see you again in uh, Europe uh, in one month and uh, thank you Dennis for being with us today it was a pleasure yeah. I would like also to thank all the people on the live chat uh, from Twitch asking questions uh, Mostly some of the people that were already there this weekend uh, watching the, the complete live. I'm thinking in uh, particular to Dio, BSSS, Breaken13, Dunnock101, DK, uh, Transmed, and even Yochimo135. So thank you guys for sticking out and uh, actually thank you for watching that. Keep promoting the channel. Uh, subscribe to the follow button right there if you're on Twitch. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash overclocking tv twitter same handle at overclocking tv uh, instagram all that all the website you look for overclocking tv and you're gonna find us and if we don't just wait for it that's it so thank you Dennis, for being there and uh, yeah. to everyone that is watching this uh, until next time keep pushing it <laughs> thank you guys keep pushing it <laughs>